Your turn. Go. Yeah, so this is end of the line. Our game of post-apocalyptic family survival. So we played this a little bit yesterday, um, and I, I enjoyed it tremendously, except for uh, one of our friends happened to have murdered my entire family in the first two turns. As Josh systematically <laughs> murdered your entire family. Uh, it's really hard to target people. You had boasted about being a Marine and uh, not running out of ammo. Oh. And the fact that he kept on killing you because of your lack of ammo made it that it much more so, poetic. Yeah, it was right. so bad. Um, so, Sibby, so are you going to give us a kind of a, a basic rundown of how we get started in this? All right. So, um, this is for our Kickstarter, which is February 15th. That's President's Day. Um, it is really a game about trying to out-survive your friends, okay? You're given a family, uh, which includes, a, it's a nuclear family, your dad, <laughs> your, your mom, your boy, your boy, your girl, and your dog, okay? And different cards in the game are going to affect different types of family members. For example, um, Friends of uh, 70s Science Fiction, there's a card based on Logan's Run. And Logan's run kills everybody over 30. Since moms stay 29 longer, it doesn't affect moms or anybody else. Right. So there's a lot of that going on. There are also right. things that will affect humans rather than dogs, things that will affect children rather than adults. Okay? So in this way, we're going to have people try to get resources from the various lines. Okay? And since the game Ooh. is about uh, sort of surviving, we're going to have various types of uh, hardships inspired by the various lines. All right, so we got ammo line, water line, food line, fuel line, and then the black market. A black market, it allows you, there is not society without crime. It allows you to swap one resource for two of another type of resource. Oh, so I use one of my bullets to take two of Jeff's food. That's correct. That's a kind of swap. Gotcha. It, it, it works. Um, not exactly at Jeff, but with the bank. Right. Okay. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so it is a last family standing kind of experience. I liken it to the Brady's and Thunderdome. You might have heard me say this before. <laughs> you told the. I, I loved the explanation that you gave me. It's like a cross between Munchkin and Agricola. Yeah. So, I, and I think there's a little bit of gloom, kind of thrown in there. That's too, true. So, in, in Agricola, you're growing your family, and end of the line, your family is shrinking <laughs> until inevitable inevitability. That is sort of how it goes. But for a core basis, this is still a worker placement game. Yeah, it's a worker placement, uh, light resource management. Uh, it plays in 50 to 70 minutes. Um, it really rewards people for punching Unless each other you're in the face. Unless playing with Josh. Then it Sorry. lasts way less time. Yeah. So some of your games, they all, they, um, a lot of them involve kind of some of the competitive nature of you against each other. And that's um, how you got your name, Fight in the Box. Yes. There's a lot of the, uh, like, scroll or die. Yeah, we have rambunctious games where people are interacting with each other in so, not-so-savory ways. Yeah, so that actually, um, it brings up something I wanted to talk to you about. Uh, and I think that you'll you'll probably enjoy this compliment. The even though we're joking about me getting my family just totally killed, uh, generally I dislike games where you can be eliminated. Mm. Like if I'm halfway through the game and then I don't get to play anymore, usually it aggravates me, and I don't I, I tend to not like those games. However, this one because of the fluff. Because of the way the game feels as you're playing it, because of the way, uh, even as far as the art on the cards goes, it, it is a much lighter version of the end of the world that I don't, like if you had skimmed this very like, like deep hardcore, you know, I would have been aggravated yesterday. But because it's just this light, fun thing, it really kind of, it didn't matter. That is so, awesome. Uh, I. Uh, th that you got it. That was what we were going for. There's some dark stuff in the game, <laughs> and if you maximize like art uh, when you have very dark stuff in the game, it, it magnifies it in a way that's not so good. Uh, one thing what Jeff it, it caught upon immediately is people tend to name their family members, and this game is almost more about the narrative of your family and everybody as it ends than anything else. Because there's a lot of rambunctious things that happen. One of the things that we love in demos is when um, 
everybody loses a game. This is a game where everybody can lose, mm -hmm. and everybody is cheering at the end that the that the uh, that everyone has died in the most spectacular fashion possible. Yeah, I I everyone died of dysentery. I, uh, no, I actually <laughs> yesterday accidentally killed my killed, ended my turn. Yes, you ended yourself. Like you so, I ended out myself uh, out of the game because I put down a card that said there's all females in this line, you know, die. Right. Handmade Mondays. And I and I totally forgot that the only model I had left was my was my mom. Yeah, you took out the uh, all the female That's characters. My decision. I'm the one that takes me out. <laughs> you had a horde of bullets too, so that, yeah. that's really good. Um, one thing that I want people to notice is that um, the game is ready to go. You can see it here with all the various steps for our tiers for Kickstarters. Um, we have to thank Mayday Games, too. They gave us the rights to use the silhouettes from their dad, their mom, and their little boy. We created nice. the dog and the, uh, the little girl so, for the game. Um, Meeple Source is providing these early sort of meeples, but we're probably going to um, make our own version. So of buy this thing. soon so that you can get the, you can get the limited edition. <laughs> The limited edition pieces. Yeah, well, and that's one of those things that we're going to think about as well. Um, if we don't make all, like like said, this would be the maximum if every tier happened. Otherwise, we have cubes for resources instead. Um, you can see Mr. Bobblehead here. I mean, Fallout 4 happened and everybody goes crazy. Um, obviously, that's not our turn marker. We have all well, the see, way from the see, actual... See, that's what I was going to ask you about. I saw this... Uh, I saw this bomb, and I realized that it's a cupcake. It is. Uh, so tell us. I know you were just about to, but I. No, no, no. It's good. It's, inter it's interesting. To hey, me. Well, you know, I couldn't get Jeff to eat a bomb, but I could get Jeff to eat a cupcake that looks like a bomb. No, it's actually a bomb. I believe Jeff's head off. I mean, it's sort of the spirit of the game, mm -hmm. which is. Um, it seems wholesome and friendly because it's a family game, but actually it's lethal and, and dangerous, so we'd get that. I mean, and then obviously the lowest tier version is the playing card that is not as sweet as the 3D version and so forth and on. Um, but yeah, I, it's important for us to, uh, that people realize, because you know, Kickstarters, everybody's been burned by a bad Kickstarter, yeah. um, that our game is sort of ready to go yeah, so it's not you guys saying, "Hey, we have an idea for a game. We want to, you know, we need your, we want your money, so we could think about our new game while we're in the islands." Right. Um, it, game in islands. <laughs> it's already, it's already a game. It already, it's ready to go. And you guys have have proven yourself uh, with uh, Squirrel or Die oh, that's so to nice be to, say. to be really really uh, an awesome reputable company. Seven minutes, Squirrel or Die. I, I like I like the, the demos being timed. However, they actually are. This one's a very quick. This plays like I said, fifty to seventy minutes. Um, it, it was important for us to do Squirrel or Die because Squirrel or Die funds us to come to conventions. Mm -hmm. um, and then we were allowed to show more people our game because, you know, I love making board games, but you don't make get rich making board games. <laughs> this has been a five-year project. Um, this is the third major version of it. This is the one with the final version of the art. And you so can see. this one is this one is the bump to get to the next one. Uh, we try to we try to um, loop them up together. We actually had a card game between Squirrel or Die and this. But then we had our game day event, mm -hmm. and we had everybody rate our games, and it was a ridiculously high and heartbreaking number that everybody said, Seppi, we'd rather that you kickstart this. Instead, this of, is, instead of Undermine. Instead of Undermine. Right. Because Undermine is great, but Undermine is brutal and a very steep learning curve, and, okay. and it was awesome. War Machine people love Undermine. They love it. They are like, hey, bring it on. But then sort of a, a wider board game audience were like, hey, what's going on with this game? I'm going to have to play it multiple times to make it happen? So, yeah. So that really sort of rewarded the shenanigans. Uh, what are these? Because we didn't play with these <coughs> using these the other day. Oh. But this one's got like a vault, like a safe looking thing on the back of it. Yeah. And then there's the alternate, which is sort of the garage door. Um, 
knowing what kind of resources your opponents have is critical good to the game. Okay. So, for example, if I know Jeff is out of ammo, right. I'm going to send the zombie hordes in Jeff's direction, which is what happened to you. Uh, Josh did that to you. You lost yeah. multiple family members. If I know Jeff is out of water, suddenly dehydration is striking the lines that Jeff has a lot of people in. So, in that way, you need a secret stash, okay, okay. where you can keep your, uh, your resources so that um, nobody else can see them. Okay, so our, our lowest tier for the game has a sort of divider. Let's let's put it out here so we can see for the camera. Oh. Real quick. So we got Whee! this little nice little thing here. Whee! Yeah, that's awesome. Whee! Because now, so now I understand what these are. They're a way for um, us to knock down Jeff's family members. Okay. So um, they uh, the various resources. If I know that you are lacking something, whatever would hurt you most is coming in direction. And there are things you can spy on people. So instead of having people get up out of the table, mm -hmm. we created secret stashes where you can hand the person your secret stash. So nice plastic ones. We actually have vault versions of those that are, um, so they're too big right now. That's why I didn't bring them. Uh, but we have vault versions of this, okay? But if we can't get nice plastic ones, then we have nice cardboard ones. So okay. each family is themed by how you think the world ended. So Jeff thought that the world ended because a Cthulhu-esque monster ate them all, okay? And then uh, John thought a, a comet crashed into us, where I thought uh, it was a virus that came and ate all the people. So that would be sort of an example. Um, so, uh, these are secret stashes. So our tiers gotcha. for various things. So we have a divider. Everybody understands what a divider looks like. I didn't bring those. Um, up to through the cardboard things through the actual plastic secret stashes. Okay. So it's for playability. It just makes it so it's nicer so you can just pass your stash and so on and on. And people like to do this so they can, uh, you know, show everybody that they have nothing left. It's dramatic. It helps the narrative. Go ahead. Yeah, that's great. Well, thank you, Seppi. Absolutely. We, uh, we truly enjoy having you on the show. Yeah. You'll probably be on the podcast. We'll Skype in with you here shortly. That would be amazing. Because uh, this video was taken very recently. <laughs> <laughs> I right. always look like this. This is yeah. I, out of a box. I go to a <laughs> hyperbaric resource <laughs> chamber myself, and I stay this way all the time. Well, Seppi, thank you. No, thank you guys and so much. I couldn't thank yeah, you enough. So, and without, we, we love your game. Without the so. support of you guys, um, this is what sort of makes being poverty-stricken so awesome, is the fact that you get to interact with people in a way and, and support the fun. So I can't thank you guys enough. Good deal. Well, All thank right. you. You guys have a great night. Check this out on Kickstarter. It's going to be on February... 15th, 15th. President's Day. President's Day. Yay, end so. of the line. Oh, yeah. Now we're closed. Aww. <laughs>